welcome to the first day back to school. The breakfast requests for today were gravy biscuits and donuts. So I went early this morning to Dunkin' Donuts, got those, and since I was there, I decided to try their pumpkin spice latte. And let me just tell y'all, they should have the pumpkin munchkin flavor at Dunkin' Donuts instead of just the pumpkin spice. They have some other kind of pumpkin, nutty pumpkin or something. I haven't tried that yet, but anyway. Gravy biscuits happening over here. All right, kitchen is clean. We still have about 30 minutes before it's time to get started. Let's take a look at our garden this morning. We have lots more peppers coming here, a lot of them. Tabasco pepper plant, which is now, I think, taller than me. No peppers yet, but tons and tons of little pepper buds, so. Hey, wait, do we have something coming here? Oh no, that's just a little flower on there, but it won't be long. Banana pepper, I don't see any more right now. I do see some more buds, but so far we've only gotten two banana peppers. Let's see, here's one, a little bitty tiny. I think I see a tomato that's ready. You wanna pick it? Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and get that one. Good job. Other than that, lots of green ones over here. Let me get all washed. He's gotta make sure those maters get washed, huh? All right, let's see how many eggs we've got this morning. We got almost a dozen today, Minnie. It's cracking. You still got the other egg? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want it. Yeah. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. That's okay. They'll eat it. Mama will bring the basket next time. I didn't think they would have eight up there today. We got seven yesterday, so I figured there would probably only be about four today because the little hens don't lay every day yet. All right. We still have half a dozen. Alright, we are back inside. I got everybody's stuff out on the table. I wanted to wait until after breakfast so, you know, they could eat breakfast at the table. Then we cleaned it up, brought out all the school stuff. I got most everything ready last night, especially the younger kids stuff. I go ahead and prep all that the night before and have it in their book bins ready for them, all of their worksheets and everything. I'm getting my teacher's guides and books together over here so I can show y'all a little bit about it. But first, I wanna let y'all know this video is a collab today with Shasta from Abiding Farmhouse. She's also sharing her first day back to school. So y'all make sure to go check it out. As soon as you finish here, I'm gonna have her video linked in the description box. Manly's having his donut now. <laughs> I've done a couple of collabs with Shasta before and we've even played at their church. So I'm sure most of y'all remember, but if you don't, they have nine girls. They also homeschool, of course, that she's sharing her first day back today too. She shares lots of day in the life videos on her channel, grocery hauls, cooking videos, all the things. So I know y'all love her. Make sure you go check her out when you finish here. All right, so this is our second year of the kids being enrolled in a Becca Academy. Right now they have their headphones on so they can't hear me. They're already doing their Bible lessons. That's the first one. So what they do is with the Academy is you log in and you're actually watching the classes at this school. It's a private school in Florida and so the teacher teachers are actually talking to the students that are physically in their class and they're talking to the ones that are watching at home and so they'll say students at home and you know interact with the kids that are watching online it's great the teachers are all wonderful I mean you know I'm sure they all are but that last year was our first year doing the Academy so we haven't had them all yet but all the ones the kids have had 
they love them. So it's very easy with Abeka Academy, even with parent-led. If you don't enroll in the Academy, if you just do the parent-led, it's all laid out for you. Very, very detailed. I mean, it is completely laid out for you. Everything that you're gonna need for every day. So I just wanted to show you an example here. This is one of the video manuals. And so like, if you just go to any day, lesson 84, which would be day 84, and there are 180 lessons or 180 days. So that's the complete school year, but you have 12 months to complete it. So you don't just have, you know, from August to June or anything like that. You have 12 whole months to complete that grade level. So like on this day for the Bible class, it tells you their memorization that they're gonna be doing for that day. And it tells you what Bible scripture the lesson is about. And then for phonics and language arts, it tells you what page they're gonna be on that day. And then seat work explanation. So their seat work is pretty much their worksheets that they're gonna do on their own without, you know, the teacher and the class all doing it together. Um, sometimes the teacher will do the worksheet with the class and with the online students all together and then they have seat work which is what they work on on their own and then the parents grade it or check it whatever a lot of people wonder with the becca academy are you still involved with teaching them yes very much so every single day the teacher actually will say students watching at home have your on-site teacher do this and that whatever you read books with them you go over things with them so yeah you are still working with each student every single day talking through things with them, seeing what they're learning about. And plus you already know the day ahead of time if you get their stuff ready the day before. Or sometimes if we're not playing anywhere on Sundays, I like to go ahead and prep the whole week's worth and then just paper clip them together and put a little post-it on this is Monday's work, this is Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. That works for the elementary grade kids. When you get on into middle school and high school, it's a little more difficult. I'll show you why. <laughs> This is Jonah's arithmetic book for this year. He's in fourth grade. So I've already taken out day one. He's already got that in his book being over there. But this is day two. So at the bottom down here, you can see it says lesson two, which is also day two. And then on the back, also at the bottom, lesson two. So you know that this is for day two. So that makes it really easy for the parent to know, okay, this is for day two, this is for day three. And the arithmetic books so far for the elementary grade kids, each day is front and back of each page. Now, the other ones, phonics, language arts, all that, they're not always that way. The spelling and vocabulary, those, sometimes, you know, lesson two will be on the front page, lesson three on the back, so that's for a different day. So what I do when that happens is I'll put it in their book bin, but on the next days, I'll put a little star at the top and they know that that's not for this day. That's for tomorrow. And then they know to leave that in their book bin instead of turning it into me or putting it in a folder. They just leave it in the book bin because they know they're going to need it for the next day. But that makes it really, really easy for not only the parent, but the kids whenever they start learning how to maybe prep their own work. I do it for them now only because, you know, in the mornings, whenever everybody's getting started, I don't want to have to be pulling out the worksheets, you know, first thing in the morning because then that's gonna take, you know, 30 to 40 more minutes before we can get started. So I do it the night before, or like I said, sometimes I'll prep the whole week on Sundays. But yeah, that's how it is for elementary grades. Middle school and high school, not so much. They, Jacob and Tyler, pretty much leave their work in their workbooks, unless it's of course a test, and then I tear those tests out. I have those down here with my teacher guides and all that. I tear those out, give them the test, and then they turn those back into me. But as far as any, you know, just regular work. I brought one of their vocabulary. I think this is Jacob's. Their vocabulary books look kind of the same. Yeah, this one's Jacob's. Okay, he's not doing this subject yet. Right now, they all do Bible first. That's another thing I was going to tell y'all. Bible is always at the top of the list on the classes for the day. You don't have to go in order, though. When we first started last year, we went in order. Like, if it was Bible, phonics, math for the little kids, you know, reading, whatever it was, we went in order. Well, then I started noticing that sometimes, you know, maybe they're not so, not so much their favorite subject would be the last subject of the day. And they would be like, oh, now I have to do this. And they're at the end of the day. So then we started changing it up and we would do the subject that they didn't like the most right after Bible. Go ahead and get that one out of the way. It's kind of like Mark Twain would say, eat the frog. <laughs> Go ahead and get the one that you're dreading the most out of the way first. That way you can enjoy the rest of the day. Now, what I was gonna show y'all is this is Jacob's 12th grade vocabulary and poetry book. So this on the front is a vocabulary pretest to see what they already know. And you'll notice that there are no lesson days at the bottom of these. No lesson day one, lesson day two, none of that. 
they're pretty much strictly just following the teacher's guidance and the on-site teacher because I read over, you know, the night before and know what's coming for that day. You have more responsibility when you're an older student to just follow along and know where you're supposed to be. And the teachers, of course, give assignments. This is what you're to complete and have ready, turn into your on-site teacher and all that stuff. Since all the kids did this last year, they know the routine, so they kind of just jump right in and get right back to it. <laughs> They probably won't need my help until they get to their seat work or unless their teacher tells them, you know, ask your on-site teacher to do whatever. And then I already have my stuff ready. I know what I need to do. The first day, there's usually not a whole lot. There is seat work, of course, for the first day, but there's usually not a lot of, you know, just like any first day. It's kind of an easing back in type thing. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go put these back up and then switch out laundry and all that. Cause like I said, they'll just be watching their lessons now unless their teacher says for them to come to me for something, they probably won't need me until it's time to do the seat work. So laundry it is. And then we're gonna go ahead and make, so I'll let the kids pick breakfast and what we have for supper tonight and a dessert. And they all picked the chocolate cobbler. Is it chocolate cobbler? No, chocolate pudding, the chocolate pudding. They do like the chocolate cobbler too, but they picked the chocolate pudding that I made. It's probably been a little over a month ago now. It's a copycat one from that restaurant that we go to. This time though, I have the vanilla wafers. So we're gonna go ahead and get that chocolate pudding made once I get the laundry switched out. Hello, towels I forgot to fold. <laughs> So, let me go ahead and get everything I need. We need all-purpose flour, sugar, cocoa powder. Roosty is still a-crowing out there this morning. They still have their headphones on, by the way, so they can't hear me, but y'all might hear them talking in the background. <laughs> Whenever they're going over their spelling words and stuff, they're spelling them out loud and stuff like that. Or even singing songs from time to time. Okay, three tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. One cup of sugar. Now we're gonna put the flour, it's two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and just a pinch of salt. I'm going ahead and put my other stuff up. I'm going to whisk all of this together then we'll start adding in the wet ingredients. I don't have this on yet of course. All right we're putting in one cup of milk and now one more cup of milk. I love this pot by the way y'all that I got from TJ Maxx. Now we're just going to heat this over medium low heat until it starts to thicken and simmer a little bit. While we're waiting on it, we're gonna go ahead and get the eggs ready. I've got my little measuring cup here. I'm just gonna put the egg whites in the mixer, the egg yolks in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and start whipping up the egg whites over here for the meringue. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of cream of tartar in here. Sometimes I leave the cream of tartar out, but I'm gonna put, it's like a fourth of a teaspoon, I think. So if you don't have cream of tartar, it's not a big deal. And just a little bit of sugar. About a half a teaspoon. Okay, I'm gonna add one more egg white in here, y'all. If I remember the last time, it was like just barely enough meringue. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one more egg white before this gets too far along. <laughs> that way I know I'll have enough meringue this time. Continue. We're starting to thicken up over here now. We're gonna take a little bit of the mixture and put it in with our egg yolks now to temper them. Just about a fourth of a cup. Then we pour those in. We're just gonna let this keep simmering for about a minute until it gets really thick. It's already starting to get thick. And we'll remove it from the heat and we're gonna put in the butter and the vanilla. Now we just mix this until all the butter is melted in. I'm gonna spray just a little bit of cooking spray. And we're gonna put down a layer of the vanilla wafers. Now, if you don't like meringue, you can substitute that for whipped cream, or you can just do the pudding. It's good all those ways. Now the meringue. 
meringue. I'm glad I added that extra egg white. Roosty is very excited today. I'm glad I added the extra egg white because this is going to be just enough. Just like if we were putting this on a pie, you want to go all the way to the edges so the meringue doesn't shrink. That's it. It's going in the oven just for about five to ten minutes. Just keep a watch on it. I start checking at five minutes. We just want to brown the meringue and it's done. How many donkeys do we have there, Manny? One. One donkey. Now, what color do you want to color in? Uh, green. Green? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the orange. You want to color him orange? Uh-huh. It's lunchtime now. I'm getting Donna and Sissy and Manly's plate fixed. They're gonna have pepperoni wraps, only Manly, he doesn't like for his to be wrapped up, so I'm just gonna put his separate. Jacob and Tyler are gonna be having leftover steak. We had some steak leftover from the steak sandwiches that we had for supper last night. We also had some of the bread, but I don't know if they're gonna make it into a sandwich or if they're just gonna eat the steak. supper request we have cheese pepperoni and thin crust pepperoni oh, 